So now that we know the details of how the embryo and the fetus actually develops inside the uterus of the mother, let's focus on the overall picture. Let's discuss how the pregnancy actually takes place from beginning to end. And then let's discuss the birth period, the birth process. So the human gestation period begins with the last menstrual cycle of that woman before she undergoes sexual intercourse and it ends with the birth of that fetus. And normally it's about 280 days, which is equivalent to 40 weeks. Now, the human gestation period can be broken down into three sections, into three stages or three trimesters. So we have trimester one, we have the second trimester, and we have the third trimester. And within each one of these trimesters, something important takes place, as we'll see in just a moment. And following the third trimester, we have the process of birth, also known as parturition. So let's begin by discussing what takes place within the first trimester. So let's suppose that sexual intercourse did not yet take place and the menstrual cycle of that woman begins. Now following sexual intercourse, the sperm is deposited into the vaginal tract and then travels into the uterus and it travels up into the fallopian tube and eventually it reaches and combines with the egg cell. And once this process takes place, known as fertilization, we form the zygote. So as soon as we form that zygote, that zygote begins to move along the cilia, along the cilia of the fallopian tube and towards the uterine cavity and eventually as it moves along the fallopian tube it begins a process known as cleavage. Now once it reaches the cavity of the uterus it undergoes a process known as blastulation to form a blastocyst and about seven days after fertilization took place that blastocyst will implant itself onto the endometrium onto the lining of the uterus of that individual woman and once implantation takes place we begin to form the placenta. Remember, the placenta is the organ that eventually begins the exchange of nutrients and gases between the mother and that fetus. Now, once implantation takes place, we also begin the process of gastrulation. Now, remember, gastrulation is the process by which we form the three different germ layers. And these three different germ layers eventually give rise to the different tissues, organs, and systems that are found within that adult individual. Now, this all takes place within the first trimester. In fact, it takes place within the first several weeks following fertilization. Now, we also have neurulation take place, and neurulation is basically when we form the notochord. The notochord eventually goes on to form the neural folds as well as the neural plate. The neural plate then forms the neural tube as well as these tiny neural crests. And the neural crests give rise to the peripheral nervous system while the neural tube gives rise to the central nervous system, the brain, as well as the spinal cord. So we see that the nervous system begins to form during the first trimester. Now we also have many other organs begin to form. For example, we begin the formation of the heart and we begin the formation of the lungs. We also begin to form our digestive system and the digestive system begins to basically form these outgrowths which eventually form the liver that eventually forms the pancreas as well as the gallbladder. And the limbs also begin to develop. In fact, we also develop the gonads. So by the end of the first trimester, we basically know exactly what the sex of that fetus is because the gonads are essentially formed. So if it's a female, we'll have ovaries. If it's a male, we'll have testes. Now, let's move on to the second trimester. By the way, the first trimester begins with that last period, with that last menstrual cycle and ends at the 13th week following uh, fertilization, essentially. Now, what about the second trimester? Well, this begins at the 14th week and ends at the 27th week. And this is when the heart begins to develop even further. Now, in the first trimester, the heart beats relatively slow 
slowly. It makes about 60 beats per minute, but in the second trimester, the beat of that heart basically speeds up. Here, it beats about 100 beats every single minute. Now, what also happens is that fetus begins to actually move, and now this movement can be felt by that mother. Now, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the face also begins to form, and it basically resembles the human being. So it begins to look normal, like a normal individual. Now, what happens during the third trimester? So this essentially begins at the 28th week and ends at the birth process. So we'll talk about the birth in just a moment. So what happens during the third trimester? So this is when the fetus begins to grow very rapidly and quickly. They actually increase in size. So this is when the final differentiation of all the organs begin to take place. For example, the cerebrum found in the central nervous system begins to fully differentiate as well as it develops those convolutions that we see on the brain. So we have different types of reflexes become apparent. For example, we have grasping and suckling and this is when uh, that fetus begins to actually suck on their thumb. And finally, the hair also may or may not grow. So these three trimesters basically divide the three, this, uh, the, the three different stages of the gestation period, the period during which that female individual is pregnant. Now, what about the birth process? Well, the birth process, also known as parturition, can also be broken down into three stages. We have stage number one, which lasts about 12 hours. We have stage number two, which lasts from anywhere from 20 minutes to one hour. And then we have stage three, which lasts about 10 to 15 minutes. So let's begin with stage one. So in stage one is when special hormones are released by the body and they stimulate the contraction of the walls of that uterus. Remember, the wall of the uterus not only has that endometrium, but it also contains smooth muscle, and that smooth muscle is capable of contracting. And so in the first stage of the birthing process, also known as labor, this is when the contraction of that uterus begins. And as a result of these contractions, that fetus, the head of the fetus, begins to position and begins to move towards the cervix. So remember, the cervix is that section between the uterus and the tract of the vagina. What also happens is the, uh, the cervix is normally very rigid and what happens is it begins to relax, it dilates and it flattens out. And this is important because that is essentially what allows the head of that fetus to make its way into the tract of the vagina. Now eventually towards the, a, uh, uh, towards the end of stage one, we have the amnion that ruptures. So the amnion is that sac, the fluid filled sac that that contains that developing embryo and that developing fetus. And so what happens towards, towards the end is it ruptures, releasing about one liter of amniotic fluid through the vaginal cavity and into the outside environment. And so this is when that woman knows she's at the end of stage one. Now, what about stage two? Well, stage two is the actual birthing process. This is, the, uh, this is when the woman actually pushes. And so when she pushes, what she does is she contracts her abdominal muscles and along with the contraction of the uterine muscles, the combination of these two types of forces, these two types of muscles, basically push that fetus through the cervix, through the vaginal cavity, and eventually to the outside environment. And then that individual, that fetus is born, and we call that fetus a neonate. Now, what about stage three? Well, stage three lasts about 10 to 15 minutes, and this is known as afterbirth. So the uterus basically continues to contract. Why does the uterus continue to contract? Well, because at this stage, the placental membrane is still attached to the wall of that uterus. And so the uterus has to continue to contract to basically loosen that placental membrane and eventually expel that membrane to the outside environment. 
So eventually the physicians basically tie up the umbilical cord and then they make the cut and finally the uterus, the endometrium or the wall of that uterus begins to regenerate itself and eventually the menstrual cycle will begin once again. And by the way, the menstrual cycle does not take place during the pregnancy period and that's because we don't want to actually get rid of the lining of the endometrium because we have a growth growing embryo and a growing uh, fetus within that endometrium. So we see that the human gestation period can be broken down into three stages. We have the first trimester, the second trimester, and the third trimester. And then following these trimesters, we have the process of birth take place and that can also be broken down into three stages. So this actually takes place before the actual birth process. This is during the birth process process when that woman expels and propels that fetus to the outside environment and we have the afterbirth stage 3 which takes about 10 to 15 minutes to actually take place.